Today, I'd say that we have the most important restoration that we've ever shared with you. Join us at the Kirby House. Well, welcome back to Preservation Travels with Lane and Kevin here at our Restoration Nation. And we are back in our beautiful Little Rock, Arkansas, downtown in the Quapaw Quarter. We have such an incredible treat for you today. It's not only a treat for you, it's a huge treat for us. I'm standing on the porch of the Kirby House. This is a property that Kevin and I have watched for the last 30 years. It's called the Kirby House because the family who built it were the Kirbys, but I think more appropriately, it really should be called the Curtis House. The Curtis House for Tony Curtis, one man who had the vision and the bravery, the foresight and the steel spine that it took to save this house, save it from demolition, save it from being overrun by vagrants who wanted to move in and burn it down, and had the vision to restore it to the jewel it is today. So let's go inside and take a look at the Kirby House and let me tell you the story of Tony Curtis and his vision for this once derelict home, proving once and for all there is truly no such thing as a teardown. Well, welcome into the entryway of this absolutely extraordinary home. We're going to take a little bit of time and we're going to show you some before photos. This is how we first saw the Kirby House. We too dreamed about what could become of this beautiful home, but we were young and newly married and had absolutely no idea what we were doing. But luckily, there was one man in Arkansas who did know what he was doing. And again, like I said, had the resolve to go to battle for this beautiful building. He had to fight the bank that was foreclosing on the property and he had to fight the city who was determined to see it demolished. So Tony, along with his incredible, faithful business partner, Jim, Jim who looked at Tony and said, I believe in you, here's your backing, saved this home and for 20 long years, dedicated themselves to the meticulous restoration of this property. And we're standing inside the outcome of that love and dedication and restoration. So let's take a look around at all the things that were put back into the Kirby house by Tony and Jim. First of all, underneath my feet, these beautiful encaustic tile floors. We rarely see this done in an application here in Arkansas because it's not cheap to do. So this is an incredibly rare and very, very special application. I have to draw your attention to this window. I hope it stays with the property when it goes up for sale. I will go ahead and tell you that the home and the contents are going to be sold separately. So the home will have a price and then the contents have a price as a package. So make sure you ask what you can buy the contents for so you can leave this beautiful home just like it is today. But let's take a look at this stained glass window. It is my favorite form of the art. It is a painted stained glass window. So artisans would obviously create your leaded glass panels and then a beautiful design. In this case, we have a scene from Greek mythology, roses, morning glories, my favorite flowers, all painted onto the glass. And then once the glass is fired, that beautiful design is on there forever. Just the perfect touch in this gorgeous entryway. Every room in this house has period appropriate gasoliers or chandeliers. They're in every single space. Not one space or one inch of a space has been overlooked. And I wanna draw your attention especially to the staircase. Take a look with me. This staircase is not original. It had to be fully 
recreated. The newel post obviously is a period newel post, but the banister was a complete recreation. And these spindles, all of them were custom turned, patterned after the one spindle that was left in place. The only extant part of this staircase is the panel down below that still has remnants of its original Lincrusta wallpaper on it. But this incredible three-story rising stair that looks like it's been here from day one is a complete recreation. I've never seen another one done to this quality. This incredible newel post has a secret. Now, every time we show a beautiful historic home, people always comment, I heard that they put the plans for the house in the newel post, or I heard they put the mortgage for the house in the newel post when it was paid off. Nine times out of 10, not true at all, just an apocryphal story. But Tony in this house made it possible. So if you buy the house, you pay off, you can put your deed to the house right there in the newel post. Well, the furniture in this house is absolutely museum worthy. I could go on about that ad nauseum, but the short story is it's all museum worthy. But I wanna draw your attention to this set in particular. Absolutely magnificent set inlaid with mother of pearl. There are four chairs, a settee, and this gorgeous writing desk. These are pieces that were originally manufactured for the Hotsey house. That Gilded Age mansion we showed you right around the corner a few weeks ago, these pieces originally sat there and now they're here in the Kirby house and they could be yours. Let's take a look at the front parlor. I want you to remember every room we go into the derelict state of this house when Tony purchased it. And now how grand and beautiful. Another stunning gasolier overhead. There are period mantles throughout the house. None of them are original to the property. They've all been curated to the period. They all look like they could have been here from day one. And again, we see that encaustic tile from the entryway reflected in the floor of the hearth here. You'll notice around me tons and tons and tons of portraiture. Tony was so passionate about the restoration of this property and the people who originally built it that he took family photographs of the Kirby family and had them reproduced as portraits. And those are the portraits that you see hanging throughout the house. Some of the portraits are period portraits. Some of them are new portraits, but I bet you would have a very difficult time figuring out which ones are contemporary and which ones are new. So let's take a look at the dining room. Well, here we are in this absolutely extraordinary dining room. Once a derelict space, now a beautiful place for entertaining. I love the chandeliers that hang over the original dining room table. I cannot imagine the lengths to which Tony had to go to track down the original Kirby family dining room table, but it's back again where it was always meant to be. Well, here we are in the secondary parlor. 
an absolutely extraordinary room full of natural light. I love the bay and the matching twin arched windows. We could see these windows or the shape of the windows from the exterior for years and years and years. And I actually remember the day that Kevin and I drove up and there was glass in the windows. The windows were being restored. It felt like a new birth for this house. And now this room is exceptional. We have another stunning gasolier hanging above us. And this room is decorated in really a Moroccan style. This Moroccan or Moorish style of architecture became very, very, very popular in about the 1870s. You see the ebonized finish, the mother of pearl inlay. You see these ebonized pieces throughout the room. So really it's during this aesthetic period that this, the furniture in this room would have been created. And the entire space is designed to reflect that from the beautiful lighting in here to the mirror over the mantel, absolutely stunningly done and another wonderful cozy space. The thing about this home that you would be getting is all of the beauty and detail of a historic home with all of the comfort and ease of a new build. All new wiring, all new plumbing, all new foundation, all new roof. It's all new and it's spectacular. Here we are in the beautiful kitchen. I love this color. I love it, I love it. We walked in and I told Jim this color is spectacular. Of course, we have the beautiful double drain board basin sink with the high rise back. This is the kind of kitchen you should have in a historic house. It is not over the top fancy. It is utilitarian. It looks like it should have looked 100 years ago. But one of the things that is staying in this room that Jim has said will stay with this house is this beautiful set of china. I'm gonna go ahead and confess to you, I whined a little bit, I begged a little bit. I hoped that Jim would say, I'll sell this china to you since you obviously love it. But the crystal and the china stay with the house because it's this china pattern that they use to take the color scheme for the dining room and for the kitchen. So, whomever you are that buys this house, you get my china and I'm jealous. We're going to show you all the extraordinary exquisite rooms here on the second and third floors of the Kirby house. Each of them has been done just to an artisan level of recreation and restoration. But I wanted to draw your attention to this beautiful part of the second floor. This is part of the tower. It's a tower because it rises all the way from the basement all the way up to the roof. And when Tony bought this house and when we first saw it, it had no roof of any kind. I don't mean simply the shingles were gone. I mean the entire roof structure was gone. It was flat across the top of what would have been this room. And Tony knew there should have been a beautiful roof structure on the top of that tower. So he found old photographs, researched them in detail to get the proportions correct, and had that roof structure recreated. Now, when we talk about restoration, we have four terms that we really talk about. We have restoration, preservation, rehabilitation, and recreation. And sometimes we have to do recreations when we're really doing a massive, massive project. And that's what Tony did with this roof structure. We have the new tower roof. We have the capital cresting all around the roof that was once there again. He did this project correctly. I know I'm being really effusive about this, but there's no way to describe to you the links to which he went to make sure this house looked like it did the day the Kirby's moved in. And I, for one, am so honored to be here.
Again, let's talk about the attention to detail. As we know in these Victorian homes, detail was never spared. Never, never spared. It was all about putting every ounce of detail into every corner of the house that you could. And Tony did that here with the staircase. I've already shown you the beautiful recreation of the staircase that looks like it's been here since the day it was built. I never, ever see recreations that 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 could fool even me and this staircase could fool even me but one of the things that he did that really makes these so authentic is the use of these period newel posts on the first second and third floor but kevin's favorite detail are these newel post lamps we have a newel post lamp on the second floor and on the third floor and these are absolutely exquisite examples that light your way all the way up the stairs Well, this is going to be a hard one for me to leave. I'm admiring Tony's antique lace portieres. It's beautiful fretwork. It's just extraordinary to see a home that someone puts so much of themselves into. So I know you're wondering why is it for sale if Tony loved it so passionately for so long. Well, unfortunately, Little Rock lost one of its great warriors in the battle for preservation about a year ago. Tony, at 50 years old, was diagnosed with glioblastoma and unfortunately lost that battle at 51 years old. And that was difficult for the entire community, for the preservation community. But now his home is looking for its next caretaker. So not only is caring for this home an amazing opportunity to have a beautiful, one of a kind, extraordinarily restored historic property, it's an opportunity for someone to honor the life of another person who cared deeply about preservation and about his community. So, are you the next caretaker of Tony's beautiful Kirby House restoration? If you are, the information in, about the listing will be in the description below. Remember, we're not the realtors. We don't represent the house. We cannot guarantee the house, and we really don't know much more about the house than what we've shared with you today, but we can guarantee you that no one could do it better than Tony Curtis, and we hope you'll help us find the next caretakers for the Kirby home. I don't know about you, but I really feel like it should be the Kirby Curtis home from here on out. Thank you for joining us on Preservation Travels with Lane and Kevin here at Our Restoration Nation. Make sure you give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and follow along on the rest of our preservation travels. See you next time.